So we'll ask to our team selections then. And uh, Gorsi, I'll let you kick us off with your back five for this game. Um, yeah, I, I don't, don't see any reason to change, to be honest. Um, back five is Alison, Trent, Chris Van Dijk and Robert, I thought. Was excellent on the side um, on Saturday, particularly first half. Um, scored a great goal, didn't he? And it's good to have him, him and Mane back down the left hand side after missing the well most of the Brighton game because they just had so much the pool going forward. So uh, yeah, that's my back five. He wasn't too happy with the ref after the game, was he, Andy Robertson? But less said on that, the better. Trent then coming back into the side for Gorsty Connor after Nico Williams has started the last two games. Of course, Brian's playing at left back, but you would fully expect Trent to come back in for this, wouldn't you? Yeah, without a doubt. Obviously, Nick Williams has fitted in seamlessly, but Trent is back in for these last three games if we're all going first, without a doubt. Theo, who's going into the midfield three? I was going to ask him about goalkeeper, and I was going to campaign, campaign for Andy Lonergan again. Might have to wait for Newcastle for that one. Um, midfield three, Naby Cater's coming back in, isn't he? He was on the bench at the weekend. Uh, I think Jurgen Klopp's team selection against Burnley very much with the next two in mind. The fact that he did drop out and Naby Keita dropped out. Uh, but then your options are somewhat limited elsewhere because I think James Milner's got a knock again. Um, I would like to see Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain against this form club. He needs to find some form. But then it's whether Jurgen Klopp really wants to put Keita and Oxlade-Chamberlain in the same midfield again. Uh, Genia Vinaldum hasn't been in his best form since the restart. So Fabinho's the deeper midfielder. So I'll probably say that's my trio with Oxlade-Chamberlain just because... I can't see Curtis Jones starting now. I think he's going to go more for the tried and trusted, the senior options. Of course, what do you make of that? And and Naby Keita not starting at the weekend. We all on Friday seem to be dead set that Naby was probably in possession of the jersey in the midfield. Yeah, I think that was just done now to, to obviously give him Curtis Jones a, a chance in his first Premier League start at Anfield because I don't think there's room in, in a game on the field for two of those two players, you know, attacking builders. We always want to get on the front foot and drive forward. So it's either either or. And obviously, Kate is the more experienced player, and, and at the moment, he's the better player. But I think Klopp just wanted to, to give Jones his, his first taste of it after his, coming off the bench. Um, I'd bring Kate back for this one. Um, I think he was a little bit hard done by, really, given the form he's in. But obviously, Klopp had, had other ideas. And then um, Juan Alderman and Fabinho for me, yeah. Connor? Yeah, as, as the boys said, I think. Okay, it's a bit unlucky, but with the games coming thick and fast, I think it was only literally with this in mind anyway, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Ronaldo and Fabinho, I think Fabinho's been excellent since the restart, to be honest. Um, you need someone else solid in there. I think Ronaldo's your best option because we discussed Arsenal's attack in line and we'll need a couple of defensive minded midfielders to complement Cater. And a forward line of Shakiri, Glatzel, and Origi. Of course, <laughs> isn't that what we're thinking? <laughs> Shakiri's an interesting. He was hasn't played since January when he came off the bench for two minutes. So I don't think I think we might have seen seen the last of him with Monos um, front three is, is the front three. We've had obviously had the Firmino discussion but um, he seems to enjoy it against Arsenal and away from Anfield so could be the perfect mid him. Yeah through gritty teeth could be the uh, the perfect time for him. Theo are you going with the, the trial and trusted up front as well? Yeah it's got to be they've all got four against Arsenal. I think they've all got four at the Emirates as well. Uh, unleash them, see what they can do. Firmino loves a hat-trick against Arsenal, so hopefully he can get another one there. He can uh, keep up his record of getting double figures in each season for Liverpool. Yes, certainly. Yeah. One to keep an eye out for. And Connor, you're going with the same. So let's get into our, our match predictions then, our score predictions. Connor, start with start with you on this one. Um, 3-1 Liverpool. Gorsley? I think we need uh, high score on 3 to Liverpool. And Theo? Uh, let's go 3-0. So just so we can get Salah close to the golden boot, Alisson close to the golden glove, Firmino back on the score sheet, etc, etc. Well, I'm going to uh, sit on the fence and say Desmond 2-2. I think I'm being <laughs> optimistic <laughs> in that one, but we'll have to, to wait and see how it does play out. Of course, you can keep across all of the, the build-up to the game, including Jurgen Klopp's press conference on Tuesday over on the Paul Echo website. Ahead of the game, we're Behind Enemy Lines podcast on our podcast platforms. If you can like, rate, review, subscribe, share, wherever it is, whether that be on YouTube or wherever it is, you get your audio on demand. But from myself, Guy Clark, Connor Dunn, Theo Squires and Paul Horst, thanks for your time and your company here on Blood Red. It's bye for now. <laughs>